The important thing about the research stage is that, it, that that information then informs the terms of reference stage. It helps you to solidify the, the project plan. It helps you to understand better whether you're going to get major gains from the project. Sometimes an organization would do the research and say, look, and this was a case in Singapore where they, they, they did the research, they thought they got a particular problem, but once they'd done the research, they found out the problem was not in the area that they thought it was. So then they changed the aim of the project. Or they could have cancelled the project if necessary. So the research phase informs the terms of reference stage. Once you realize that from undertaking the project, you're going to get significant gains from it, you then move to the ACT phase. And the ACT phase is all about learning from other organizations. And that consists of a number of steps. It, in fact, consists of how many here? Nine steps. Here you would establish the criteria for selecting benchmarking partners. That criteria would uh, come from the research phase, where you've already identified you know, what, what, are the pro what, what is the process you're focusing on and the various components of that. You then select the partners. You would then invite and get the partners to participate in the project. You then prepare for data collection. You then collect and store the data. You then analyze the data, formulate recommendations, and review again that you found out what you need to find out from the act phase, and then obtain approval to start the next stage of trade. What is a, a key element um, here is that there's no one way to learn from other organizations. You can learn from other organizations, as I said, through undertaking a literature review. You can learn from other organizations through surveys. You can learn from other organizations by visiting from them. There's lots of different ways to learn from other organizations. The approach you'll use for a particular project depends on your terms of reference for the project. It depends how much resource you're prepared to put in the project. It depends what the expected benefits are from the project. Therefore, if you want to undertake a quick project that's, that's going to take two or three weeks, it's unlikely you can go and visit other organizations. But if the project is key to the future success of your business, then maybe you want to invest more time and effort into that project, and maybe that would involve visiting other organizations. You can learn a lot from not visiting other organizations. So this is why benchmarking can be easy. For instance, if you're a hospital, if you've got some hospitals here, I've already shown you a case study from the UK from which you can learn an awful lot from. And therefore, you could follow all these trade steps and just have the learning phase learning from that case study. Therefore, benchmarking project could be completed within you know, one or two weeks from that. And you'd also gain an awful lot. But if you've got more resources to put into it, you can, as I say, include uh, visits to other organizations. And obviously, in the hospital's case, they decided to learn from Ferrari, McLaren, and uh, we all saw the results of that. The deploy stage. It's about communicating the findings to your key stakeholders, getting their buy-in to the project findings, then developing an action plan, obtaining approval for the action plan, implementing the actions, and then reviewing the deploy process and obtaining approval to start the next stage of trade. So you can see benchmarking does not just stop at comparison. It does not just stop at learning. It carries on to deployment as well. And in the case of the hospital, we've seen their solution. And then we now move on to the evaluate stage. The evaluate stage consists of performing a cost and benefits analysis to see whether you've obtained the results that you wanted to achieve from the project. But it also includes reviewing your whole benchmarking process because maybe after conducting one benchmarking process, there's some learning that can actually be used when you conduct benchmarking projects in the future. Maybe you've got a smarter way of conducting benchmarking projects in the future. The third stage is to share experiences and project outcomes. And this is all about getting that cultural change within the organization. As soon as other departments or other parts of the organization can see the success of this project, they'll want to undertake benchmarking as well. And then step four of the evaluate stage is close the project. And as we see, the results speak for themselves. The beauty about this particular methodology is that it at the end of each stage, you're always asking yourself, are we getting the benefits that we wanted from the, from the project? If not, you stop the project. So you'd never actually go through the five stages unless you're going to get substantial benefits. And supporting this particular methodology is a project management system as well, using Excel spreadsheets. So 
the Excel spreadsheet would actually have the steps that you need to follow and then within your project team you decide, decide who's responsible for that step and what activity is required as part of that step. Because this means within one spreadsheet you can capture all aspects of the project and also the findings from the project. Therefore if you're running maybe five benchmarking projects, each benchmarking project would have a project management system perhaps using Excel spreadsheets and those, that Excel spreadsheet becomes a great communication tool for the project team and also for your stakeholders. <coughs>